Okay, we're gonna get started on the cybersecurity assessment tool here. Before we jump in, a couple quick questions, and I'd just like a show of hands on these. Of everybody here at the round table today, who has familiarity or at least knows what I'm talking about when I talk about the cybersecurity assessment tool? Just show of hands. Okay, great. It looks like at least everybody has some idea what, what I'm talking about here. Okay, put your hands down and show of hands again. Who has a really good jump on completing the assessment or has it completed already? Okay, looks like about 50%. And, and that's the trend that we're, we're typically seeing. Uh, so you know what that means? That means that the other 50% of you haven't even started. If you're in that boat though, you, you, may be, you may be wondering, you may be putting it off because you don't want to do it. You may be wondering, is it panic button time? Am I okay? What do I need to do? I'll say it's not panic button time yet, but you need to get started on this. Covering this today, you're going to get a tool as part of the round table that you can download, and it's my cybersecurity assessment tool. And it'll help automate the process, help take some of the thinking out of it, make it a little bit easier. So if you don't have it done yet, good news, this, is, this presentation today, the tool I give you today, is going to give you a great start. We're going to go through the presentation, we'll demo the tool, and then we'll also have some time for questions at the end. So a little background. Cybersecurity, as defined by NIST, is the process of protecting information by preventing, detecting, and responding to attacks. You don't have to watch the news uh, for very long and you'll see evidence of attacks going on, right? That's why this is such a hot topic right now. The breaches that we've seen in the last couple years have really impacted our economy and our society. And that's why NIST, in 2014, released the framework for improving critical infrastructure cybersecurity. And you're going to see here that this that, that framework is the backbone of the FFIEC cybersecurity assessment tool. Not long after, <clears throat> the FFIEC piloted a program that combined their IT handbooks and that NIST framework to assess cybersecurity preparedness for banks. They took the feedback from that, they took what they found from that, and in June 2015, they officially released the cybersecurity assessment tool as we know it today. Right now, I don't know that there's a, well, I don't know, I do know, there's not an official deadline. But what I have heard from industry experts is that starting 2016, the next examination that you have will ask that you provide this tool as, as part of that examination. Now I'm sure you can all you can all imagine and, and the ones of you the, the the guys in here that are you know the, the folks in here that already have this done, you, you can relate to this firsthand is that there's always a level of scrutiny when something like this is, is released. You know, I've heard people complain about the rigidity of it. Some say it doesn't scale well. Others say that there are some big jumps in the inherent risk ratings that are out there on it. And I, I, I see where they're coming from. And, and to be honest, I, I, I agree to, to a point, to a level with, with each of those. But personally... I don't think it's a bad thing for banks to use this to tool to get a new angle on their cybersecurity. Or if it, if it provides a new method of communication to their board of directors. Every situation that I've been in, I've, I've helped a bank complete this assessment, or even speaking to colleagues of mine that have completed the assessment for, for their clients, there's always an aha, or, or maybe not just a single aha, maybe several ahas that come from this. You're sitting there, you're going through it, and you say, you know what, if we did X, Y, Z, that, wouldn't, that, that would actually be a good thing for our cybersecurity posture. We do need to implement that. Is the whole thing perfect? No. But if at the end of the day, it 
does, you know, at the end of the day, it gives you that kind of value, then it is a valuable exercise. Then it is an important tool. And I'm glad we're, we're here talking about it and working on it here today. So what are the objectives of the tool? What is FFIEC looking for when they ask you to do this? First, they want you to identify your cybersecurity risks. Two, they want you to determine your cybersecurity preparedness. And you're going to see when we get into the tool, they'll refer to that as your maturity level. Three, they want you to prioritize your actions to bridge the gap. That's part of the analysis stage of, of the process. Four, they want clear communications between management and the board of directors. And five, they want a repeatable and measurable process for all financial institutions, regardless of whether you're 10 billion or 10 million asset size. Now this objective sounds really great, but I do think this is where it gets in trouble a little bit. One size fits all is not a great idea in information security. And it, it does become a little bit tough for this tool to cover that kind of complexity range from the 10 million to the 10 billion or above. And you know, like I said, in, in all of its flaws though, this is still a valuable exercise and it's still really important for, for us all to, to do and, and a, it's an important process for us to complete. So the process, and it actually ties in, each of these tie in to the, the objectives. So that's, that's a great thing, right? Uh, the first is we're going to identify our, our risks, our inherent risk. Two, we're going to assess our maturity level. Three, we're going to analyze that information. So we're going to analyze the current risk, what our current maturity level is, what our target maturity level is, and then decide what actions we need to do to bridge that gap. We're going to report those actions and those findings to the board of directors. And then five, we're going to take action. So those, all the things that we said to the board that we're going to do, we're going to implement those. We're going to do the work. And the sixth step that's not on here is we're going to repeat the process. So the inherent risk is broken down into, into five different categories. And they're grouped really on, on how they affect the cybersecurity of the bank. The grouping doesn't have any effect on your overall risk. Each item is weighed equally to the others. Those items are rated on a scale starting at least, then minimal, moderate, significant, and most. And from that risk, we're going to use a table that the FFIC has provided to give us our target maturity level that would be commensurate with that risk. And, and you'll see when we get there um, what that table looks like and how, how it does that. Once we have that inherent risk, we need to determine our current maturity level. So the, the current maturity level is broken down into five domains and they are five different pieces of information security. They're listed here. I'm not going to go into to depth on each one, but basically they are they're, they're like the five pillars of, an, of a good information security program. They are rated based on declaration statements in, in, in each of those, those domains um, at, at differing maturity levels. And, and depending on how you answer those, so if you can say yes to, to all these declarations and, and, and you don't have any no's, you can achieve certain, certain maturity levels. Those maturity levels are baseline, evolving, intermediate, advanced, and innovative. And <clears throat> what's important to know on, on this is that they are independent of each other. So the scoring in one domain doesn't affect the other. You could be an evolving in, in the second domain and not even be a baseline in the first and vice versa. But more importantly is that the preceding maturity levels in each of those domains must be met to achieve higher maturity levels. 
and it's not just the preceding level, it's all preceding maturity levels must be achieved to reach that next level. So a perfect example of this, if we said domain four, external dependency management, which is basically vendor management, if we said that, if we determined that from our risk, we need to be of an evolving maturity for that domain. And we go in and we start answering our statements based on that domain and we say, okay, you know, we can answer yes to all of the baseline statements except one. We roll on to evolving and we can answer yes to all of those, those statements. You would say, well, I'm an evolving, right? Because I have all these evolving processes and policies in my, in my organization. That must be my maturity level. Not according to the FFIEC cybersecurity assessment tool. Because you have at least one no in your baseline maturity level in that domain, you are not evolving. You're not even baseline. You have to have, you have to be able to say yes to all baseline to be baseline. You have to be able to say yes to all baseline and all evolving to be evolving. And I think, I think that makes sense to everybody in here. In, in, in describing it, it's a little, a little tough to see just, just in description. We get into the tool, it's going to become very clear what, what that looks like. And by the way, since we're talking about the tool, uh, the, the spreadsheet that you'll be getting a download for all of these calculations are already built into that it does those it, it, it determines those things automatically and you don't have to do that again take as much of the thinking out of it as possible you answer the questions it tells you where you're at risk wise where you're at maturity wise is that acceptable is there some gap that you need to, to bridge and then um, allows you to go in and determine what actions you're going to take to to do that again that spreadsheet is automated, so you don't really have to, you don't have to think too much about these things uh, if you're using that. So we determine, you know, the, the risk, we know the maturity level, current maturity level. Now we need to do that, that gap analysis on it. We need to analyze what we need to do. We're going to use this table to start that process. And what I like to do is use the horizontal axis there where it says inherent risk levels. I'm going to find my inherent risk level and just say, for example, we're at a minimal here. If you use that column in the table, you can see by the blue boxes there that I could be either a baseline evolving or intermediate maturity level for being a, 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 an FI of minimal risk. So the idea is at minimum, you need to be a baseline, but you could be as high as an intermediate. And you could say, well, couldn't I be an innovative too? You could, but what the FF, FFIEC is trying to make the point of here is that that may not be the most efficient use of your, of your budget if you're shooting for innovative while you're at a minimal risk. And, and so we want to be smart about, about information security and, and, and how we're, we're spending in that area. So once you establish that mature, target maturity level from your inherent risk profile, it's time to start. Um, it's time to start analyzing what you're going to do with that. So again, establish target maturity level. Compare your actual to the target level, and then you're going to go back and you're going to determine the action items needed to fill the gap between the actual and the target. And just like everything else in banking and especially information security, we're going to report this to the board. And in that report, we're going to include your current inherent risk profile, your current maturity level in each domain, your target maturity level, an action plan to bridge the gap between those two. And you know, you, you may be in a spot where you 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 don't have to do anything to bridge the gap. Your current may be at your target maturity level. Well, you still need to report. You still need to tell them that. You need to say, hey, this is where we are now. We're good. We'll review it again next year. and We, we may have things we need to work on then. Um, and, and, and keeping in mind that risk changes as, as different parts of your organization change or maybe certain, you know, an audit shows that you thought you had a policy that did 
know, certain had had certain controls in place, and and the audit finds that you didn't. Th those are adjustments that would be need to be made. And those are done annually and as any major changes take place inside your network. Last step, take action. And this is where you're going to do the work. You're going to take, you know, so whatever you reported to the board, and 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 keep in mind you, you have to prioritize these 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 action items. If you if your target maturity level isn't evolving and you're only a baseline in one or two or all of your domains, let's just say for example, you're you're a you're a baseline in one of your domains. Work to get that domain up to an evolving before you work, do any work in any of the other domains. So you need to, you need to pick your low-hanging fruit. You need to get to your target before you start doing anything else. And understand that it can't all happen overnight. It's an ongoing incremental change that you're, that you're making here. Some of you are going to do this assessment, and you're going to have 15 or 20 action items to get to your target maturity level. You're not going to be able to get all that in one in one swipe. You're going to report. You're going to have to report to your board. Hey, here's where we are. Here's where we need to be. We're going to break up these 15 items into. You know, we're going to do five in this six month period, five in this six month period, and five in the next. And over so over the course of those 18 months, you you've broken it down into chunks that are manageable. You have a good action plan, which examiners are going to be happy with. Your board's going to be happy with. It's going to be a much more manageable process. <clears throat> and it's 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 an overused phrase in information security, but I, I I just truly believe in it. It is a process. It's not an event. We do all of these things, and we do them again. So you can't do it once, file it away, and think you're done. It, it's it's something that's going to happen at least annually, or as major changes occur in your in your network, and it's just something that's going to be around that we all need to get used to. Does anybody have any questions before we jump into the demo? Okay, so no, no, no questions right now. Here's the thing though, you're gonna get back to your bank, you're gonna download that, that tool, you're gonna start working on it, and something's gonna come up that you wanna know more about. Here's my contact info. That is included in the packet that you have. Feel free, questions, comments, feedback, Shoot me an email. Give me a phone call if you want, if that's, if that's easier for you. Whatever you feel comfortable with, please stay in touch, and we will jump over to the demo.